Welcome back ladies and gentlemen to Kingdom Come Deliverance. My name's Camel and today I'll be showing you where to find the hidden treasure for the treasure maps 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5. Once you find and loot these 5 secret treasure chests, you'll gain many amazing items which have a total value of over 23,000 gold, which is amazing. Now to be clear, you don't actually need to have the treasure maps to find the treasure. So if you don't have the maps, don't worry, that's what this guide's for. If you are here for one specific treasure map, luckily for you, timestamps for each of the different treasure maps in this guide can be found down in the description, along with links to my social media and to my other Kingdom Come Deliverance guides. Be sure to check them out. Now firstly, before setting off, you'll need to get a shovel. The easiest way to get this is at the Rate Mill, where you exit the prologue. It's right here next to the cart and is yours for the taking. Now, let's get to the treasure. So in numerical order, firstly, we have treasure map one. It's not too clear where it's pointing you on this one, but it is actually quite easy to find. What we need to do is head into the woods that can be found to the northwest of Sasao. Shortly after entering, we'll walk up a little hill and we'll see two ancient burnt out houses. This is where we need to be. On the map, as we can see, I'm standing up here, which is to the north, northwest of Sasao and the Sasao Monastery. And as a closer look, we can see that there is an interesting site here, which is the two houses, and it can be found just inside the woods after you go through the field. So once here, head into the house on the left, walk through these vines, and then over in the corner, there is a ladder which you can take down. Of course, take the ladder down. You might want to light a torch down here just because it's quite dark. So once you do that, head through, we'll see a guy on the ground who's had his head crushed by one of the wooden beams that's fallen down. And then at the end here, we have the chest. This is the treasure chest. Now, it will have a hard lock, so you will need to be able to pick hard locks. If you don't quite have the lock picking skills yet, luckily for you, I do have a full and complete lock picking guide that you should definitely check out if you struggle with lock picking or you don't have the required skill. In that video, I show you how to do both. Now, back to this chest. As we can see, we have some incredible items. Those Augsburg plate chalces are actually very, very top of the range uh, heavy armor. In fact, it's some of the best of the game. Next, we just have 349 gold. Excellent. The Noble Dark Shoes. I don't know if you'll end up wearing these, but they do have a value of 941. So we've got the Odd Die, which has a greater chance of landing on odd sides. So if you want to gamble away all of your money, do that. Recipe for Antidote, that's pretty good, and who needs a key? 3, that's a lock picking level up book. But even if you don't want to use it, you've got a value of 450. And we also have the Yu Longbow, which I do believe is actually the best bow in the game. One thing that gives this away is that when you go to the information tab, the Longbow is the best and deadliest weapon medieval bow makers came up with. But not just anyone is able to handle one, most of all it needs a strong steady arm. So the description there pretty much just says it's the best bow in the game, and it's also, did I mention, the best bow in the game. You will need, as you can see there, a minimum strength of 15 and a minimum agility of 10, so it is a pretty end game bow, but once you get there, here it is, here's the best bow in the game. So in total value, treasure chest number 1 will have 5,053.6 groschens worth of stuff in it. Not bad at all. Remember, you can come here whenever and get this. So moving on to treasure chest number two. Again, it's not super clear where this is because there's no names on the map, but it is relatively easy to find, although it is hard to pinpoint. So after heading west from Sasa Monastery, we want to go through the field and down the hill towards the river at the edge of the map. Now down here, nestled in some bushes, we will actually find a grave. And this is where treasure map number two was sending us. So on the actual map, as we can see here, we are kind of west or northwest of Sasa Monastery. Right here against the river, there is a grave. If we get a bit closer, you can see more specifically where it is. So in terms of location, it's easy to get to, but in terms of actually finding the grave, I found it hard because it is surrounded by really thick bushes. So of course, once here, dig the grave up. This is why we had to bring a shovel. Now, once it is open, I mean, we'll find the classic things in a grave, but we will also find a basket with a stone on it. This is the treasure. Open that basket. All right, so we've got decorated riding boots. Again, you might want to wear these if you wear light armor, value of 647, very nice. The die of misfortune, this die just basically says don't use this die, so 
Take its advice, don't use it. We've got 276 Groshen, very nice. The Lazarus Potion, now that's great because it just basically heals you fully. That's a very good potion. Now the Milanese Plate Chaucers, they are really good. They're not as good as the ones we got just before, but they are very good, and even if you want to sell them, they've got a value of 1.2 thousand, very nice. Next we have the Noble's Quiris. This is an excellent piece and one of the most high ranking chest armor pieces. There are better ones, but considering all you had to do was dig up a grave, this is really good. Again, a value of 2.5 thousand and then a very valuable book. The Alchemist's Dream, with a value of 1.3 thousand. So all in all, an excellent basket. And it also has a combined total value of 6,153.5 groschens, groschens, whatever they're called. Very, very good, considering all we had to do was dig up a grave. Next we have the treasure map number three. This one's a bit more obvious where it is, as we have both Sasau and the monastery marked on the map and we can see it's at a house on top of a big hill in the forests. So this one isn't too hard to find at all. And we'll find the house in the woods on top of a hill. Now if we walk around to the southern side of the house, there is a very hard locked chest. Now this is the treasure. But before we get to that, as we can see on the actual map, we're in the woods at an interesting site on the western side of the river that is to the west of Sasau and Sasau's monastery. If we take a closer look, the house and the interesting site and the chest can be found right on the eastern edge of this kind of black patch of trees right here on the map. This one really isn't that hard to find. But what is hard is the fact that the chest is a very hard lock. So you'll have to get your lock picking up to a very high level before you'll be able to unlock this chest. Again, check out my guide for lock picking if you're not at this stage yet. But you'll need a lock picking skill of around 15 to 16 plus to be able to unlock this. All right, so now that we have it open, we've got the Akin Dark Brigadine. I think that this is considered light armor. So it's got a really high armor rating for light armor. It's also got that great value of 1.5 thousand. We've got the fashionable slippers. Um, you'll probably sell these for 463 gold. Then we have 401 Groshans. Ah uh, yes, now next we have the Magdeburg Plate Chaucers. These are actually better than the Chaucers we got earlier. While they are worth less, they weigh the same, and they also have one more armor rating. So that's an excellent piece to add to your collection. We've got the Noble's Hunting Sword. You'll probably just sell this because there are some better weapons knocking around. We've got the Odd Die. This has a better chance of landing on odd sides. And we have a Silver Ring. Again, an excellent haul from this treasure chest. In total, we've got a value of 5,141.8 groschens. And before we leave this place, if we turn Turn around and head south, up in a little shack, we can actually find an easy locked chest. Now since the treasure map sent us to this house, I'm going to assume that this is part of the treasure. So of course, open it. Inside we'll have some potions, almost a hundred gold, a necklace worth a thousand gold, and an ornamented golden goblet worth 350 gold. In total this chest has a value of 1604.3 gold. Pretty good, considering you just opened an easy chest. All right, moving on, we've got treasure map number four. Now this one is a little bit hard to find. Um, you'll have to walk into the woods and basically head up a super steep hill, which is difficult, or you can come at it from the other way and head down the hill. But it is hard to spot. Luckily though, it is marked as an interesting sign. So on the map, we can see that it's kind of right in between I'm gonna butcher these names, Newhoff and Let It Go. I'll stop trying to pronounce it, I'll just let it go, shall I? And if we take a closer look at the map, we can see that it is north of Miller Wojcik. But again, it's on a super steep hill and it is hard to find. So once here, we'll find a, uh, a stone wall with a door, of course, head inside. And right here is the treasure chest. Again, it's very hard lock, so make sure when you come here that you are prepared to unlock a very hard lock. Of course, open it. So we've got the Arching Bassinet. That's got a massive armor rating, also a massive value, easily one of the best heavy armor helmets in the game. We have the Ash Longbow. While it's not the best, it's probably the second best bow in the game. It's only three damage off the Yu Longbow that we got earlier, which is the best bow in the game. So if it's three damage short, it's probably the second best bow in the game. And if you don't want it, you can sell it. Then we've got 317 Groshans. We've got another necklace worth a thousand gold. Then we've got Nobleman's Boots worth 1.1 thousand. Just sell them. We've got the Noble's Composite Chaucers worth 1.3 thousand. Not as good as the other two we got earlier, so just sell those. We've got the recipe for the Bowman's Brew. This is a value of 265 and we have the Shrinking Playing Die. 
Now this is actually one of the best die in the game as it's just one of the few properly loaded die loaded in favor of its holder. So that is actually a great die to have if you do want to gamble. But we've got a combined value of 7,119.3 gold in this chest. Not bad at all. And finally we have treasure map number 5, which as we can see it's clearly marked near the well. Which is why if you couldn't find this one you're going to be annoyed at where it is. So walking uphill into the woods from the river, keep heading up towards the fields until eventually you should hopefully see a bunch of rocks and bushes in here stuffed away is a well. Now on the map this is as we can see kind of found directly between these four different cities. And if we take a close look at the map, we can see that it is here, which is marked as an interesting site. And that interesting site is, of course, the well. Now, this is the well that we saw on the treasure map. The one in which the treasure was next to the well. Well, ironically, no. Now, the treasure is actually found inside the well inside a sack. So once you do find it, open it. Now this is nice and easy because it doesn't require any lock picking, but inside we'll have a dyed Milanese Brigadine, super high armor, super high value. In fact, it's one of the best in the game. We've got fashionable slippers, just sell those for 463 gold. We've got grasses and herbs, volume four. This is a herbalism skill book, which as we can see has a value of 1,300. And you can sell that straight away if you like, because if you followed my best starter guide, you'll already have a herbalism of 20. We've got 271 gold, and we have the recipe for the Marigold Decoction, which has a value of 150, which is actually great because Marigold Decoctions are brilliant potions that will heal you and save you in many situations. And finally, we have the Unpopular Die. As I mentioned with the last chest and the really good die, this is one of the really bad die and apparently everyone who rolls it loses. So you might want to sell it unless you're collecting die. But altogether, this final treasure map number five has a value of 5,076.1 gold. Not bad at all. So provided you looted all five of the secret hidden treasure map locations that I showed you in this video, you will have collected a delicious sum of gold and a stockpile of very powerful weapons, armor, jewelry, clothing, books, and other bits and bobs with a combined total value of just over 23 thousand gold. You'll also have your choice of amazing and in some cases even the best armor in the game and along with the best bow in the game. A very very impressive haul considering that you can do this whenever all you need is a shovel and the lock picking skills. So these maps really are something to treasure. And there you have it, ladies and gentlemen, I've been Camel, and this has been my secret hidden treasure map guide locations for treasure maps 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. I do hope that this video helped you out, and if it did, you'll be very interested in checking out my other Kingdom Come Deliverance guides. Links to them can be found down in the description, and they'll help you out a lot. Now, down there in the old description, you can also find links to my social media. Now, be sure to follow me on Twitter and Instagram. If you would like to support the channel in a more personal way, you can become a heroic patron on Patreon. As I'm sure you know, all of my time and energy goes into making these videos that I create for you to enjoy, so your support is most appreciated and welcomed in any and all forms. So thank you very much for watching, thank you for supporting the channel, and I will see you very shortly in the next video. I'll see you there soon.